Hello everyone, welcome to Skinwalker, a short and free adventure game made by Snow Owl about a camping trip gone wrong. It's based on the Skinwalker, which, according to legends, is a person who has the ability to take the form of animals. I want to thank viewer Alicia for suggesting this game to me. Once again, it is totally free, so link to where you can play it for yourself will be in the description. And, just like I suppose pretty much any horror game, it is best played in the dark. So let me turn off my lights here. There we go. Okay, let's get going. This is from Joe. The following story really happened. I saw it with my own eyes. Maybe it didn't happen as I saw it, but more on that later. We were all going out camping, me and three friends from university. Let me introduce my friends. This is Darren. I wouldn't say that he is our group of friends leader. Or actually, I would. He's the one that always gets us all out of the house and into the action. He's the first one to hit on that cute girl by the bar. He's the first one to jump from the roof in the swimming pool. According to himself, he was even more impulsive when he was a kid. I can only imagine his childhood, and how often he must have broken his leg, scraped his knee, and hit his head. Still, if it weren't for Darren, we wouldn't have half the amount of fun we have. This girl is Celeste. We have known each other since we were children. We met each other when she moved into the house next door when I was seven. My mom told me, to go show her around the neighborhood, and after that, we were inseparable for a few years. She's a nice girl, although her health isn't the best. She has some kind of heart problem, which I forgot the name of. This forced her to be away from school during, expen ex during extended periods of time during her childhood. Because of this, until we started university, I was her only friend. Still, she never complained, and I've always seen her as a positive, happy girl. Next is me. I'm Joe. As the name implies, I'm pretty normal. I don't have any overwhelmingly bad qualities, but on the other hand, I don't have any overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly good ones either. I live in this apartment, a short walk from my university. This is where us four friends usually gather before going out. This guy here, looking all relaxed on my bed, is Michael. He's my neighbor, living in the apartment next door. One day, while I had Celeste over, he just barged in. Hey man, your place looks pretty nice. Mind if I join you for dinner? He said. As you can imagine, he's pretty pushy. I don't think he realizes it himself. He came over several times after that day. After that, we somehow naturally became friends. So, one day, Darren came with the idea that we should go camping. Darren said his family had a cabin a little bit into the forest. So camping we went. It could be fun, right? Of course, me, Michael, and Celeste dislike the idea of staying in a cabin. It's a camping trip. We have to sleep in the wilderness. So Darren told us about the woods near the cabin. I don't remember much about the trip to the cabin. Uh, we joked around, took a few breaks, normal stuff. Either way, we drove up to the cabin and left the car there. We took a short break in the cabin and set out into the wilderness. We went pretty far in. I can't say how far in distance exactly, but it took several hours to get to where we set up camp. The first day we just screwed around. Nothing abnormal happened. But then... Okay, here we go. Now it's time to play. <laughs> but then... <laughs> I like how it just leads into that, but then, and now you're just left with the tension of knowing that something's about to happen. Okay, well, it's not nighttime, so... The woods aren't very creepy when it's not dark, typically. Well, he's sleeping. Hey, Celeste. 
Did you sleep well last night? I couldn't rightfully say. I wasn't here for when I was sleeping. For I am but a player who is playing a character. I, I mean, wait, no, no. Let's not break the fourth wall. Morning there. Or should I say good afternoon? <laughs> I guess I slept in. Fix us some wood for a fire, will ya? Oh, yeah. We could use a fire. It's our fireplace. I need to gather some wood if I want to make a fire here. Okay, well, normally I would say what could possibly go wrong, sarcastically, by looking for wood out in the wilderness alone. But it is daylight, so it should be fine. Right? Right. I set out to gather wood for a new fire and water to cook with. Oh, well, that was easy. Oh, I guess that's me gathering wood. Oh, okay, it now appears to be nighttime. Um, I guess I've been out looking for wood for a while. <laughs> what is that sound? It doesn't sound like something you'd hear in a forest. No. No, it doesn't. It sounds like somebody's playing with a broken synthesizer. There we go. A bucket of water. Now I just need to get back. Wait a minute. The sound stopped. I, I'm confused. Is it nighttime or not? Because it looked like it was nighttime, but now it looks like it's daylight? Hmm. Time to make a fire. I should have enough wood to make the fire last a, a while tonight. There's enough wood for a fire. What should I do? Go to sleep? My head hurts. Thank you for telling me. I'm sorry, but I, I don't think I can go collect, like, Advil in the forest. I could try, but I don't think I'm going to find it. I'm pretty sure Advil doesn't grow on trees. Although I think it does grow on the ground, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a root, isn't it? Advil root. Yeah, I think so. We sure had a blast yesterday, didn't we? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember. I don't remember, Celeste. I have amnesia. Well, he's not going to wake up. No need to go into the tent right now. Poured water into cooking pot. Oh, there we go. We can cook now. Excellent. All right, let's cook something up, shall we? Agreed. I'm hungry. Later that evening... Oh, great. It's foggy. I honestly don't want to leave the fireplace. I really don't want to leave. What the hell is up with this fog? Every time I've been here before, there haven't... There haven't ever been any fog. I, that should be hasn't, but... My, minor spelling mistake. No big deal. It's time to go to sleep soon. We're all out of booze. Guess we have to go back to town tomorrow. I'm not looking forward to that eight, that four-hour trek. Maybe we shouldn't have gone so deep in. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. Celeste? I don't think I can talk to her. Oh, there we go. It's really chilly outside for being in the middle of summer. Hey, anyone else hear that sound? Yeah, now that you mention it, what is that? Sounds like something metal-y. 
Mentally? <laughs> Is that even a word? Are you stupid? Shut up, asshole. It's a word if I say so. It stopped. Maybe it was some kind of machine? Who the hell would go out hours from the near civilization in the middle of the night and start revving up some kind of weird machine? Who gives a shit? It's probably someone using a chainsaw or something. Let's go to sleep. I'm tired. Can I go to sleep too? I really want to just go to sleep. I'm sure that was no chainsaw. I wonder what it was. Yes, go to sleep. Go to sleep. Sleepiness soon overtook everyone. But something woke you up a, a few hours later. In your half-awake state, you stumbled outside the tent. Darren? Michael? Celeste? Is that you? The mist is even thicker than before. I can't see much. Okay, now it's definitely nighttime, and that sounded like a bird. I should check out that sound. Looks like there's a little bit of embers left in the fire. There's that metallic sound again. It's getting louder. There's someone up there. Hello? Michael? Is that you? Say something, will you? Who are you? Oh, stop right there. I have a knife. Shit. Okay, um... I think I'm gonna go back to the tent. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go back to the tent. Goodbye. Hey, wake up. There's something outside the tent. Uh, what? I'm sure there is. Lots of squirrels and shit. Go back to sleep. Hey, is Michael here? Mm, yeah, I'm here. Why wouldn't I be? I don't know. The, the thing outside looked like you. It's probably some animal. I don't think we have to worry about a, a fox or whatever. Take it easy and go back to sleep. Well, alright then. Maybe it was just some animal. But those sounds... A few minutes later... <laughs> okay, drop it. Whoever that is, I want to sleep already. It wasn't me. Me neither. That didn't sound like any of our voices. Well, shit. Now I'm never going to be able to sleep. Should we go outside and look? What if it's some crazy psycho with an axe? All the more reason to check it out. It's not like the tent is some kind of impenetrable fortress. Seriously, if that was one of you guys, tell me right now. This ain't funny anymore. Okay, everyone get out together and check it out. I ain't going alone.
What the heck is that? Someone was definitely here. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. C c calm down, Celeste. We're four against one here. It'll be fine. What if the dude got some kind of weapon with him? I mean, he killed his little critter, didn't he? Michael is right. We gotta get the hell out of here. We can't just up and leave. It's the middle of the night. What about our stuff? Screw our stuff. I'm not staying here another minute. Fine, we'll leave, but at least bring the flashlight and some food and water. I think you're overreacting, though. We haven't even seen anyone. Still, someone or something left this dead creature here. We can't exactly go back to sleep with no worries. I guess you're right. I'll go get the flashlight. Everyone, br bring some stuff you think we might need. A couple of minutes later. Alright, let's go. So is everyone, like, um, just, just shadowing me, but I can't see them? I'm assuming so? What is that thing? It looks like... What kind of an animal is that? That sound is getting louder. Okay, I'm just gonna go. Let's just go. See if the thing is still there. No. Good. It's so dark. At least it's still summer. It's not pitch black. This fog is really annoying, though. So we are going back to the cabin, right? I guess that's the plan. Um, do I see something in the forest? I think I do. A while later, it became obvious Darren had no idea where we were going. He was swearing and looking all around. We've been walking for awfully long now. Are you sure we're out? We're on the right path, Darren? I've walked this path hundreds of times. We are on the right path. I don't recognize anything from when we were walking to the camp, though. I said we're on the right path. But as time went on, it became obvious that Darren had no idea where we were. Darren couldn't find the path. Maybe it was the fog. Maybe the darkness. Maybe something else. Either way, we were lost. I kept looking behind me. I was having that feeling where you think someone is watching or stalking you. I nearly tripped over Celeste when she fell. Help Celeste up? Whoa. I have an option here? Interesting. Why would I not help her up? Huh. Yes, I, I, of course I will. I'm just curious why I'm even being given the option. I took Celeste's hand and dragged her to her feet. It was getting even mistier. If not for the flashlight, I wouldn't have any idea who she was. <laughs> if not for the flashlight, I wouldn't have any idea who she was. Hmm. I wonder if it's possible there's multiple skinwalkers, and maybe one has taken over... Who was it that was guiding us? Darren? And perhaps he is intentionally leading us into the wrong path? I recognize that tree. We're getting to the cabin. Again, I had the feeling that something was watching me. My gut was screaming at me that something somewhere was wrong. I realized the sound from earlier was back, softer, but still present. I started looking around, panicking. Did a head count, or more accurately, silhouette count. 
Me, Celeste still holding my hand. Darren in the lead. Michael to the left. Who the heck was the guy beside Michael? My grip on Celeste's hand tightened, and I quickened my pace. I thought about shouting out, but was worried. If I did, maybe the thing would turn around and jump Michael or something. I didn't know what to do. I ran my fingers along a knife I brought from camp. Then, the cabin appeared, out of nowhere. The mist was starting to disintegrate around us. It was easier to make out who everyone was now. I looked at the thing next to Michael. She looked just like Celeste. The thing whose hand I was holding leaned in front of me. It wasn't Celeste. I should have ran or screamed, but my body was clenching up for no reason. The thing turned and walked into the mist. I caught up with the others as they entered the cabin, practically in tears. They couldn't find the car and were arguing about where we put it. I told them what I saw. Obviously, they didn't believe me. Still, everyone hurried inside and locked the door. He followed us here. He really wants something from us. He doesn't seem to have anything to break down the door with, though. What the hell does he want with us? Hell if I know, ask him. Um, <laughs> Elk, uh, hi. Hey, don't touch the door. I wasn't gonna. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, can, can I like drag something in front of it? Nothing useful inside. Did he go away? Did, did he? Did he go away? Okay, I won't touch it. I won't touch it. It seems like it did go away. You, you know, I know skinwalkers are said to be able to take the form of animals, but I wonder if they can take the form of humans as well. I'm guessing they can, because apparently the thing was kind of like Celeste? Hmm. A fireplace. I don't have any matches, though. Okay, I need to... find some matches. Nope! Shit! The bastard hit the breaker. But he can't get in, right? What the? Uh, Celeste just ran screaming. Celeste! He's j just trying to scare us. Take it easy. We'll be fine. We'll be, fi we'll be fine. A bench made out of a big tree trunk. A table. What, what is that? Am I looking out a window? If I am looking out the window. I don't think I want to look out the window. I want some matches. A couple of books and board games. Damn it, those aren't matches. Don't look out the window. I don't want to look out the window. Anything but the window, please. Celeste? Celeste? This is an awfully large cabin. Is that, is that Celeste? She seems to be hyperventilating. It's alright, Celeste. The door is locked, and it's the only way in. We're safe here. No response. I'm gonna look out the window anyway. Okay, okay, okay. Nothing. Oh! There's something out there! Who is that? Looks like something that doesn't have a face. Okay. No, don't look out the window again. Don't look out the window again. Dear God, no. A very simple kitchen. Various tablewares. I need matches. We're safe here. It's cool, man. 
Yeah, yeah. We played some cards here before going out camping. Need matches. Or something. I don't see any, though. Can, can I not go to the... Oh, there we go. I was stuck on something. You saw something looking like me? Yes. Yes, I did. Better not touch it. I agree. Nothing useful inside. Okay, what have I missed? What have I missed? What have I missed? Fuel for the fireplace. Yep, but I don't need fuel. I need matches. I don't have any matches. That is a bench. That is a table. That's a creepy window that I am going to probably regret looking out of. Okay, nothing there. And that's just a couple of books and board games. Celeste seems to have calmed down a bit. Yeah, it doesn't look like she's hyperventilating anymore. Nothing useful. You think they'd be in the kitchen, but they don't seem to be. A very simple kitchen. That just looks out the window, which I don't want to do. Don't look out the window. Okay, where am I going to find some matches? What have I missed? I can't believe I'm missing something in such a small environment. When in doubt, mash the use key. Suddenly, a strong sense of nausea hit me. There was something in the air. I could feel the horror overtaking me again. Um, what's happening? I can move. I can actually move. What? Whoa. What the hell? Uh, I don't feel so good. <laughs> no. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. What the fuck? Last. Celeste? Celeste? Ugh. She's feeling the same thing. We're all feeling it. Can't get up. I'm the only one who can actually walk properly. Need to make it stop, but how? Oh, I had to lie down. I couldn't sleep and I wouldn't have, even if I could, I just wanted to rest. I'm not sure if resting right now is the best idea, but okay. I waited for the world to stop spinning. I looked out a window. No, don't look out the window! There was someone in the tree. I stared back, not able to register what was going on. I quickly pulled the blinds down. Celeste came through the door. She looked pale and disheveled. I dragged her to the bed and laid her down. She was gasping for air, as if something was suffocating her. Eventually her breathing became more regular. I asked where the others were. She shrugged. The room had stopped spinning a bit, but I felt far from good. Okay, I need to find everyone else. Suddenly, a voice could be heard from the, the locked door. 
What was worse, though, was that it was Celeste's voice. Let me in, let me in, God, let me in there! I immediately pulled my knife and placed it at the Celeste lying in the bed. Her eyes grew wide with shock and alarm, but they could have been faked. What are you doing? No, I'm the real one. The one out there, that's the imposter. I was kind of in a trance, unsure what to do and staring down at her. Maybe I would have stabbed her if the voice at the door hadn't changed into some low, deep, guttural voice. Then it became high-pitched, like a little girl's. I pulled my knife away. I snapped out of the trance. Now the nausea was returning. I got to the door and opened it. There was nothing there but a trail of black liquid. Suddenly, I got this feeling that it might not be the best idea to go outside. <laughs> I'm not... Hell no! I am not going outside. No. I decided not to go outside. <laughs> go out into the woods in the dark. With the skinwalker, or maybe multiple skinwalkers out there. Nope. Celeste? Everyone else? Where is everyone else? Are they here? Suddenly I got this sinking feeling in my stomach. Like something was seriously out of place. I couldn't place the reason, but I would soon find out. Um... Is it that? Michael was lying on the floor. Shot to death. Now I know he was shot... Wait, how, how do I know he was shot to death? Just a feeling. Just a feeling? How... How would you just have a feeling that someone was shot to death? What do you, what do you mean? Him... Him too? Recently shot to death, Darren was lying on the floor. I could see the wounds from the shotgun. What the hell? When did this happen? When I've heard the shots? Celeste? Oh shit! Celeste was dead, lying in a pool of blood on the floor. It looked like she had been shot. Who the hell shot them all? Panic started flowing through every, every vein in my body. Suddenly I realized... Was there really someone outside? No. The shotgun. How tempting it had been. I had been looking for the right moment for a long time. The right moment for what, you ask? Why, the right moment to kill my friends, obviously. What else? The shotgun. Oh, how tempting you had been. I just had to do it. Always taking me for granted. Those bastards. Just because I'm nothing special. I should teach them not to mess with me. <laughs> That's the bad end. <laughs> that is a bad end. That's freaking horrible. There's no way I'm leaving it at that. Okay, we gotta try some other stuff. Let's see, what can I do majorly different? Um, How many... Different decisions... Oh, the game just shut off. How many different decisions were there? I think there were two. You had the choice of whether to take Celeste's hands, who, you know, turned out actually wasn't Celeste. And you had the choice of whether to go outside or not. So... Let's go back and try those... again. So I'll be right back. Alright, we're back to this section. Help Celeste up. Before I said yes. This time, I'm going to say no. Because it's not actually Celeste. She shook her head and got to her feet. The ground was getting muddy. It was getting even mistier. If not for the flashlight, I wouldn't have any idea who she was. I recognize that tree. We're getting to the cabin. Again, I had the feeling that something was watching me. My gut was screaming at me that something somewhere was wrong. I realized the sound from earlier was back, softer but still present. I started looking around, panicking. 
Did a head count, or more accurately, silhouette count. Okay, let's see what happens with this. Me, Celeste walking besides me. Darren in the lead, Michael to the left. Who the heck was the guy besides Michael? I quickened my pace. Okay, so this is all kind of the same here. Then the cabin appeared out of nowhere. The mist was starting to disintegrate around us. It was easier to make out everyone, who everyone was now. I looked at the thing next to Michael. She looked just like Celeste. The thing next to me leaned in front of me. It wasn't Celeste. <laughs> okay, so that still happens. But this time I didn't touch it. Okay, so let's, let's get back to the cabin. followed us here. Okay, so... Oh, wait a minute. This is different, isn't it? it I don't think this happened before. Hold, I thought this was all going to be the same, actually, up until the next decision I have to make where I decide whether to go outside or not, but did, did he say this before? Shoot, he'll kill us. Shoot him. Huh? What? Shoot. Shoot now. Nobody said a word for what felt like an hour. Finally, Michael slowly walked towards the door and opened it. What they saw sent them all into shock. It was Joe. The Joe inside the cabin started laughing. Silently at first, then louder and louder until everyone had to cover their ears. That was when everyone realized they had made a mistake. The Joe outside the door was the real Joe. <laughs> That's another bad ending. <laughs> oh my god. I just keep getting the worst endings. Thankfully, there seem to only be two decisions that I've encountered so far, so it's easy to see what to do next. I need to uh, pick her up, pick up Celeste, who's not actually the real Celeste, and then I guess go outside when that decision comes, so I will be right back when I get to that point. Okay, and we are back to this decision. Suddenly I got this feeling that it might not be the best idea to go outside. Well, as I know, it is actually a horrible idea to stay inside. So I'm gonna go out. Here we go. The thing was nowhere to be seen. Just as I was turning around, I took a look at the roof. There it was. It was close to a corner, about to turn. It looked like an albino male with really long limbs. He had fingers instead of toes, and all 20 of them were elongated. He was facing away from me. Suddenly the head swiveled 180 degrees and stared at me. I started choking up, as if suffocated. It was hard to breathe. The thing opened its mouth, slowly and deliberately. I thought it was going to devour me, when its tongue snaked out. On the tip of the tongue was my face. Like a... Like, like a what? What does that say? I don't know what that says. Like a tumor? Oh, that's an M, isn't it? It's all kind of smashed together. Like a tumor. Eyes closed. Lips upturned into some psycho smile. There's a legend somewhere that when you see a doppelganger, you die. I thought of that legend, but then the creature rounded the corner and it was gone. I lost it and followed, vision hazy. My heartbeat suddenly seemed ear-splitting to me. I was stumbling because my legs seemed unable to coordinate. Suddenly I stumbled forward and toppled down. Once I lay there, face down in the grass, my body just seemed to shut down. I couldn't move. I couldn't even turn my head. There was something dripping on my back. My eyelids seemed heavy and started closing of their own accord. I saw white feet with long fingers for toes step into view. When my eyes opened, Celeste was shaking me. She was on the brink of tears and her voice was cracking. 
Get up, get up. That bastard was in your skin. My head hurt. I was, about to, I was about to ask her what happened when she started pulling me backwards towards the door. We toppled out and stumbled towards Darren's car, which was parked in a different location from what I remembered. I was glad to be alive. The mist had stopped completely. Celeste was downright crying now. She pushed me into the back seat. That's when I noticed. I was wearing different clothes from when I lost consciousness. Michael was there, huddled up and face buried in his knees. Some clothes, stained with blood, were beside him. They were mine. Darren immediately stepped on the pedal, but nothing happened. He swore and did it again. I noticed that Celeste was armed with a shotgun from the cabin. I asked them what was going on. The thing joined us. He looked like you. We got out of the house and found the car. We were halfway down the road. Then Michael started screaming. I looked at Michael. He had a glazed over look in his eyes. The thing burst out of your clothes and jumped out of the car. Michael and Michael had the shotgun. He was firing out the window. We saw the thing run all the way back to the house. At the freaking speed of light. It was in my skin? Yeah. I looked down at myself. I wondered if I had been possessed, or if worse, the thing had cut off my skin and wore it as a coat. I shuddered at the thought of something crawling around in my skin. I asked Michael if he was alright. The thing talked to me. I asked about what. He didn't respond. I realized he was sobbing. The car jolted into motion. Darren fist pumped as the car started accelerating. I turned back towards the cabin and saw the albino thing standing on the roof of the house, watching us. I shuddered and turned back. Celeste screamed. The thing was in front of the car, on the windshield. It opened its mouth and my tongue face slithered out. Celeste fired the shotgun. The glass shattered and it was thrown backwards. Darren shrieked and I saw blood coming from his face. Something pierced my face and I realized it was glass. The car skidded to a stop. The car doors opened, without any discernible reason, and I fell out. The thing lay directly across from me, eyes closed as if it was sleeping. I wished I could close my eyes. Its mouth hung open, and I saw myself again emerging. I didn't move or say anything, because I couldn't. My face looked at me and started to talk. I love you, I love you, I love you, I want to be you. It repeated over and over again. It was coming close to me. I wondered if it was going to bite me to death. The thing's eyes shot open and I realized it was going to kiss me. I managed to regain some control and instinctively twisted back from it. I guess that was what saved me. There was a sound like an explosion and blood, sp and blood spouted from the thing. Celeste was standing over it. Her face and body were bleeding, and she had this spaced out, psychopathic look in her eyes. She had just fired the shotgun. My face looked directly at me. I am you. It whispered. She fired again, and I saw my own face begin rotting to nothing more than a skeleton in front of me. The thing's head flowered open. That's the best word I can find to describe it. Its head kind of split and split again, peeling away. I saw faces, lots of them, all on the inside of its head. I think I saw Celeste and Michael's faces. They were whispering something unintelligible. In the center, where the brain should be, there was a single red cat-like eye that was rotating in its socket. It was producing the mechanical droning sound. Celeste fired one last time. The thing sort of withered away, becoming wrinkled and smaller and rotten, until it just disappeared. Celeste dropped the shotgun. I started twitching and spasming as control of my body returned to me. Eventually, I stood up. We got into the car silently. Darren was bleeding too, but no one said anything. We drove back to the city in silence. 
We explained away the damaged car as being attacked by some crazy thieves. We had ourselves patched up. Michael was still in a shock-like like state. I hear he was like that for a while. When I asked him what he thought of that incident later, he denied it ever happened, with compelling conviction. His eyes looked dead, and he had lost weight. I don't know if he forced himself not to remember it, or if he genuinely knows nothing of it. I know what I saw, but I can't remember the exact place. It has been two months now. We still refrain from talking about it. If you were expecting some huge twist or something, you'd be disappointed. I still don't know what we met out there. I don't want to know, actually. I still have nightmares about my own face, shouting, I am you. One thing I do know, though. I am never going camping ever again. Okay, there is the proper end. Wow, I am impressed. Okay, so let's analyze this a bit. But before that, let me collect my thoughts. All right, I think my thoughts have been gathered up sufficiently. I hope. We'll see. <laughs> so, delving right into it. Again, I'm very impressed. I really enjoyed it. One of the things I think it does really well is sound. Sound is something that's extremely important for... For, for most games, it's very, very important, but it's especially important for horror games. Sound can just add so much to the experience. And I think it's often not focused on as much as it should be. In terms of its ability to... To add uh, creepiness. Or horror to a horror game. And... And Snow Owl seems to have realized this and used it to great effect because the sound is very impressive. I mean, there isn't a particularly large amount of it or anything like that, but it's just what is there is just used effectively. Just the nice sounds in the, uh, the sound of the birds in the trees in the forest, which adds a nice feeling of, oh, everything's perfectly fine. You know, it, it gives, it's a contrast. It gives a nice contrast because the, the chirping birds is happy and it's nice. And then you start hearing this horrible droning mechanical noise and it isn't so nice. So it gives you a nice contrast, and that noise, just the, the use of a recurring noise, an eerie recurring noise, is very effective in horror. It's very good. And then, of course, the, the laughing skinwalker outside of the tent, and all those things like that. Just really good use of sound. Yeah. Another thing I really liked about it is how much it played on paranoia. It actually reminded me quite a bit of The Thing, uh, the John Carpenter movie. I haven't watched the new version of it, so I'm not sure how similar that would be. But yeah, just talking about uh, the John Comp the John, John Carpenter, Jesus, I can't talk. <laughs> talking about the John Carpenter version of The Thing. It, um, it reminded me of it a lot in that they both involve small, relatively small groups of people who are in an isolated location and involves a kind of alien or strange creature that is trying to harm them, and it can take the form of the people. And that introduces a a sense of paranoia in the entire group where no one trusts anyone, and that's exactly what happened here. And I love that. That's such a good thing for horror. I haven't seen it used very much, but just that sense of paranoia. Of, you know, is your friend actually your friend now, or is it a creature? It's incredibly effective. And it reminded me of The Thing, and that is a good thing to be reminded of, because The Thing, the John Carpenter version, is a damn good movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I should rewatch it, actually. It's actually one of the few physical DVDs I actually own. Where is it up here? The thing. Let me see if I can find it. Where are you? I'm not somewhere up here. It's weird. I thought it was right there. It's gone missing. But anyway, yeah, it's one of the few physical DVDs I own, and it's just such a good movie. And this reminded me of it, and that is a very good thing. Very good thing. Let's see, what else? Um, as far as stuff I think could be improved, I think the biggest thing that hurt my experience with the game was the way the endings were set up, and the fact that you have two different... You have two different 
times in the game where you have decisions to make. That's when you have the option to pick up Celeste, who isn't actually Celeste, but, you know, it says it's Celeste, and you think it's Celeste. You have the option to help her up, or not. And then later, when you have the option to go outside of the cabin and follow the trail of Black Liquid, or not. So, you have two times when you can actually make a decision where the story branches. However, if you... If you don't do those the right way, basically, if you don't do exactly what you're supposed to do, you end up with a bad ending. Of which it seems, I think, what was there, two? Two bad endings and one good one? And, I mean, having different endings, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. There's plenty of games that have branching storylines, and they all lead to, to interesting endings. Like Heavy Rain, for example, has a bunch of different endings. But... The thing is, the, the bad endings, which are literally called bad endings, are not satisfying or really very good, to be honest. They're kind of... it's like the game just ends and you're... I'm just left thinking, oh, okay. I, I'm not left... I'm not left feeling like this is a different, but nonetheless interesting ending. I was just left feeling like I failed. Like, literally, I just failed. And I just had to go through the game again to get the right ending. And that's basically how it's set up. It's, it's not a bunch of different endings that are all interesting in their own right, but rather it's one good ending that is actually interesting and a bunch of other ones that aren't really. Like, like the first bad ending I got, where it turns out that you had just been looking for the opportunity to kill your friends, and you just shot them all. The end. That wasn't interesting, come on. Like, that's the, the resolution to the story, is that you went crazy and you shot them all? It was you all along, or something? That's, that's just... It's not a very good ending. It's not a very interesting one. So I think it's unfortunate that they decided to make it so that these different endings were basically just failure states. They're kind of like prettied up failure states. Instead of it just saying like, boom, you die, game over. They, you know, there's kind of a story that's been put into those different endings, but it's not really satisfying. And I feel like, I feel like the game actually would have been improved if they simply didn't have that. Like, if, if you're not going to have the different decisions lead to endings that are interesting in their own right, I think it's better just to cut them out and just have it so just have it so there's one pathway through the game. You know, you don't have to have branching pathways in the storyline. You don't have to have that at all. If you are going to have it in there, make sure that they're interesting. But it's perfectly acceptable just to cut that out and have it so there's no decisions. That's fine. I think it would have been improved just by doing that. Because when I was going back through to get back to those decision points, it's... I mean, it's just kind of... It really ruins the immersion to just have to go back through the entire game and just mash the use key to skip through the, di the dialogue because there's no save points or anything like that. You know, it's just kind of... It's a little bit annoying, kind of frustrating. So I think it definitely would have been improved just by... by either, either fleshing out the different endings or just cutting them out. And just having one very strong sort of pathway through the game. Yeah, so that was, the, that was the only major problem I had with it. Other than that, there was just some minor stuff, like, you know, some spelling and grammar mistakes, but that's not a big deal. But overall, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm especially impressed by its use of sound, and its use of the sort of paranoia group, like, the group worrying and being paranoid about who's actually their friends. That whole idea, that... I don't want to call it a mechanic, it's not the paranoia mechanic, what's a better word for it? The paranoia... Uh, I'm not sure, but yeah, just the element of paranoia in the group is very good. Th those two things, the sound and the paranoia, they reminded me of The Thing, were what I was most impressed by. It's just a it's just a good little horror tale. You know, it's not filled with cheap jump scares or anything like that. It's just creepy. And it's pretty it's pretty subtle in its use of horror because it uses it uses creepiness more than uh, it knows when to show you something and when not to. You know how there's some some horror movies, games, and it really anything where you might have heard this before, where it's better to to not really show the monster, to leave it up to the viewer's imagination or the player's imagination, and that's totally right because if you have like a monster and you show it all the time and you get to look at it for I don't know hours maybe, it it's hard to really find it all that scary. Really, some of the scariest stuff is the stuff that goes on in your mind that you're imagining is there. And it just did, did that to good effect, because you don't get to just, like, stare at it. It's You just see little creepy snippets of it, 
Like when you turned around, or, or when Celeste, the Celeste, I'm doing air quotes here, the fake Celeste, leaned into you and showed you its face. You just see a little peek of its face and then it disappears. That is creepy. And the other little glimpses at it, and like when you're glancing out the window, and you saw one of those things, and you, you know, it looks like its face is all bloody or something, you're just staring at it and trying to think, what the f- you know, what is that? It's left up to your imagination. And that is key in horror, and it was done very well here. So once again, I'm impressed. Very impressed. Yeah. Alright, I hope everyone enjoyed my playthrough of Skinwalker.